Can tiny amounts of LSD help people as they approach the end of their cancer journeys? That's what a world-first University of Auckland trial aims to find out. So we're more likely to think of LSD as a mind-bending recreational drug uh, than as a pharmaceutical treatment. But as a growing number of studies have found, taking extremely small doses of it might prove a useful alternative therapy. Around the world, and I did mention this earlier in the show, sufferers of depression have increasingly been turning to microdosing. There's typically 5 or 10% of a full dose close to the psychedelic hallucinogen as a self-treatment. And in some early studies, LSD microdosing with healthy volunteers has been shown to have acute benefits such as increases in creativity, uh, connectedness, happiness, and wellness. Now research wants this tri- to trial this approach and help people with late stage cancer. The study's leader is Dr. Lisa Reynolds, a senior lecturer at the University School of Psychological Medicine, and she joins me now. Uh, Lisa, good uh, good afternoon. Kia ora, Leah. I hear you. I hear. You. No, thank you for being with me because I understand you, you've got a little bit of a cough today, so I appreciate. I do. I do. So apologies if I cough in advance. Oh, no, look, it's, oh gosh, the, the bugs are going around, please, if you need to cough, do it. Um, yes, I just want to ask, so this is this a world first? Have there been no other studies investigating LSD microdosing with people who have cancer? I mean, as far as I know, um, there's nothing else happening um, internationally overseas at all. Um, there was, um, yeah, back in the 50s and 60s, there was um, some work done with high-dose LSD, um, in people who had had cancer, but um, but but there's been nothing um, ever conducted looking at LSD microdosing. So yeah, it's um, wow. pretty novel. So why? So you're after forty participants with late stage cancer. Is is that right? Why why at that stage? Yeah. Well, um, the reason we're focusing on advanced cancer is because, well. Often, I mean, that's a, that's a group that are uh, underrepresented in research, but also uh, it's a it's a it's a time of progno- um, of diagnosis which can be particularly difficult. So often, uh, what's happened at, at that later stage of cancer is that that um, uh, treatment moves from being curative to being palliative, and to, you know, basically focusing more on quality of life. But mm. but what can happen for people is that. Um, their, their mortality uh, can be can can uh, be much more confronting, and so you know people often have um, a lot of existential distress that comes up at that time. So uh, fears of um, fear, fears of death and dying, um, thinking mm. about their life and guilt and you know the things that they have and they haven't done, um, feelings of isolation. It can be a really lonely time for people. So it's a it, it's a group of people that um, really. Uh, need support. Yeah, and I mean, like most of these, when you when you put these groups together, there will be a there will be some that that partake of LSD, and then there'll be placebos, no doubt, in there as well. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah. and over and over how long of a period are you running this? Well, the trial itself um, is is going to be running for about the next six months. But in terms of actual participation, um, people will come in, they get randomised, as you say, to either receive LSD microdosing or um, one of three possible placebos. Okay. Uh, but everyone receives meaning centre psychotherapy, and we know that meaning centre psychotherapy, it's a talk therapy, it's come out of um, Memorial, Memorial Sloan Kettering in the US, and it's got really good evidence that it's helpful. So for every participant, we hope, will get some benefits from that. Uh, but then half of the participants are going to get LSD microdosing on top of that. The researchers are hoping for uh, to recruit Māori uh, as half mm. of the participants. What, why is that? Well, we know that Māori um, uh, have significantly poorer outcomes when they have uh, a cancer diagnosis, so they're significantly more likely to die of the cancer. Uh, and they also have much higher rates of anxiety and depression. 
So um, it's really important that you know any new developments in the area really support the people that really um, that really need it. Now, of course, we're we're, we're recruiting non Māori as well, um, but um, you know one of the one of the things that my my colleague on the trial, um, uh, even Moranga, she's a co-investigator and cultural advisor on the trial, and she says, you know, what's good for Māori is good for everyone. So, you know, that, I think that's, um, that's, you know, one of the things. And we really wanted a strong Māori voice in this work so that Māori can ultimately benefit um, from you what know, we're doing. Do you know, Lisa, why you said Ma- Māori will, will, will die uh, predominantly more at a higher rate of, of they have cancer than non-Māori? Mm, and, and mm. why, do you know why that is? I think there are multiple reasons um, and probably more than, than I'm able to sort of go into here. But, but I think, you know, there's partly there's late presentation. So people, you know, are Māori are more likely to, to go to their doctor a little later, um, you know, when the symptoms are more advanced. Um, there, are, there are, I think, issues with, not, um, with Māori not being ref- referred through to specialist treatment um, in the same way as non-Māori. Um, but um, that's probably just... Yeah, a little bit more than I can comment on just at the moment. 